This is Hitting the Post, NorthJerseySports.com's original multimedia series talking all things North Jersey soccer. Brought to you by the Bergen County Education Association. Bergen County Public Schools work because the BCEA works with you. series talking all things North Jersey soccer. This is season two, episode four, and the county tournaments are in full swing. I am Corey Doviak being joined by my partner, former Cliffside Park head coach and the reigning, I guess, until the Bergen County tournament ends this year, the reigning county champion head coach, Jimmy Fusey. Uh, you know, you got a couple more weeks. Halloween, man. Halloween, I let it go. Yeah. Halloween, and then, I let uh, it go. And then you got, then you got to come up with a new uh, intro to me. Yeah, then you will be washed up has been head coach Jim Fusey. Is that uh, good? That's still building the Bergen County Retired Coaches Association. <laughs> that's right. Any feelers out of, there, just email me and we can get it going. We're gonna have a beach yeah. soon, fellas. It's funny you should say that because today I was out, you know, I'm running all around Bergen County and I got a special request to go shoot a J V game, which I did, no story to follow. But I I took some pictures over there and who do I see standing on the sidelines but our old friend Bill Jager. Nice. He would like to come on and – okay, so we'll preview next week's show where Bill Jager will join us as a guest host, and he's going to be running around the county tournament this weekend too on Sunday. He's going to line up some guests, and we'll go around the round of 16 with Billy Jager. A little old BCSL American reunion, Jimmy. You know what? The thing with Bill, I think it's a great guest, and I haven't coached against Billy and been in quite a bit of meetings with Billy, and I'm not saying anything I haven't already said to Coach. Right. Um, that's that's great because I you know I can, I can come up and bring my pillow because once Coach Jager starts that's an easy day for me. Once Coach Jager starts he don't stop in terms of talking he just goes he just goes. All league meetings should have only been maybe forty five minutes they were two and a half hours long because Coach Jager just kept going like Coach Coach let's go wrap it up let's go all right you kid was a humanitarian great he has to be, I get it come on what's his numbers what do we got here he just goes so we'll look forward to that next week. Yeah, he's a lot of fun, and I'll tell you this, he retired as the athletic director at yeah. Tenafly High School, and uh, every time I've seen him since, the smile has not been moved from his face. I mean, he's a volunteer assistant now at Old Japan, and looks like he's having a time of his life just talking about soccer. You know, and on a coach side of it, having coached against him for, I don't know, maybe 10 years, um, what I've learned as a coach um, has been priceless going up against them. I've scattered his teams not to see his the tendency of his tendency tendencies of his teams, but just to see how they how they work a ball and how I would go watch them play to see what I can bring into my program. What he's done for me as a coach, as a mentor, is off the charts and I think when you when you compare Bergen County coaches, he's gotta be up there with top two or three coaches uh in Bergen County history. Uh, he's he's a legend and um he's just a gentleman so it's he's already cool coming on. He- He's already coming on. He said yes already. You don't have to butter him up like no, this. No, no, I no. Mean, I don't. No, I don't butter anybody up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I was going to invite retired assistant coach John Lombardo on next week, then you might have to do a little buttering. But we're not. <laughs> All right, Jimmy. Let's set up this week's show. We are going to have Anthony, Dr. Anthony Vassallo, the assistant coach at Leonia. The Lions play a big game against Garfield. Yeah. Obviously, every game from here on out is big in the county tournament. But they're in the round of 16 against Garfield on Sunday going to be interesting to get what he's thinking. But before we get there, I think we should go over a little bit what happened in the first round. I mean, we don't have to break it down too uh, badly. There were no, nothing really popped off the screen to me as far as upsets go. I was at one of the games. Richie Barton was at one of the games. Uh, Richie Barton did Bergen Catholic against Woodridge. It's a good story both ways because Woodridge is a first-year varsity program. They make it to the county tournament. You know, they had the 650 winning percentage to get in in their very first year in existence. And uh, I thought Richie Barton summed it up very well, and I very rarely give him a compliment. But I will say that in his story on NorthJerseySports.com, he said that a couple weeks ago people were looking at Bergen Catholic as a team to beat in the tournament. They have a couple of tough losses, and then they find themselves in a playing game against Woodridge. So to the Crusaders' credit, they uh, you know got out, went out and took care of business in a 5 nothing win over Woodridge. The thing I took from that, and I agree with you, but the thing I took from from Richie's article, um, two things. Number one, uh, makes a lot of it was at Richfield Park. I was at Richfield Park over Peck Park over there. Yep. There was no stand, so he actually watched the game because there were no meatball <laughs> sandwiches to be bought. Right. Um, but the quote from um, the coach from Woodridge, uh, I think, really struck a tone, tune with me. Um, first year varsity coach, he just said, "Listen, man, we." 
that side was the better side. We just didn't want to get embarrassed. And we right. fought until the last whistle. And um, as a young coach, as a young program, you know, that's that's all you can ask for your kids. And um, hopefully there's uh, better things in the future for, to come with that program. And uh, it was nice to see that his quotes were very uh, inspiring to his players. It was nice to see. Yeah, he wasn't out there going, oh, you know, we just got killed 5 nothing, blah, blah, blah. Right. I think he understood. There was a purpose. There was a purpose. He, he, he was giving a message to his kids, and there was a purpose. And it was nice to see a young coach have a purpose within his messages. So. Yes. And, you know, Jim, since you have taken over this co-hosting role, yeah. and when I go out, I go out and watch games, I talk to people. Yeah. And everybody that I bring the show up to or br- or brings the show up to me, you know, they talk about Jim Fusey. You have a lot of admirers out there. I was I see I would have thought they said he stutters too much. Um, he sounds drunk half the time. Uh, you need to get a new co-host. But I, I, I listen, man. It is what it is. You put me on the show because I speak my mind. I speak my mind. Maybe people appreciate that. And in in in, in, a, in a world where it's, there it is stuttering again. You see that? In a world in a world where everybody's politically correct, you know, you're going to get a candid truth from me. So. Absolutely. And one of the guys who was very uh, complimentary of you, and a guy that I know you have known for a long time. Yeah. Demba Main, the head coach at Fort Lee. I was at yeah. the first round game between Fort Lee and Dwight Anglewood. I'll say a couple of things. First of all, Dwight, I did, you know, all this stuff going on that we've seen with football this week, with the recruiting and the big boys and the parochials and the blah, 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 blah. A game like Fort Lee, Dwight Anglewood is why I do what I do. Mm-hmm. First of all, it's, it's played on, you know, behind the middle school. That's where they play. Uh, it's a nice field, nice facility and everything else. But it's, you know, not a, a zillion dollar, uh, you know, facilities and everything else. Yeah. Dwight Englewood is competitive in its league, does well enough to make the county tournament, and goes out and plays its butt off. You know, listen, at that level, you're always hiding a couple of kids. Like, let's be honest, not everybody is going on to play college soccer when you're talking about a Dwight Englewood, Dwight Englewood's boys soccer program. Yep. But what I love about it is that kid that's, tr- you know, is maybe trying to be hidden He's out there running as hard as he can, working as hard as he can. He's not saying, boy, I stink, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He's giving his best effort. And, you know, Dwight Anglewood overmatched a little bit against Fort Lee, but played right down to the final whistle, got a penalty kick in the last four minutes to make it 2-1 and to make it interesting, had another chance or two to even get the equalizer. But as it turned out, Tenafly with a big 2-1 to win over Dwight Anglewood. And I will tell you, I was impressed with the pace of play, and also with the in-game adjustments that uh, Demba made main, made against Dwight Angle, which played a high back line. They were offsides probably four or five times in the first half, and uh, then made the correction, start to play a little bit more direct. I talked to Demba Main after the game and, uh, about that subject. Here's what he had to say. Good. So, I mean, you might have wanted to make it a little easier on yourself, putting away one of those 50 chances you had there late, but 2-1 of the Burton County tournament is good, right? Yes, it is, it is. Uh, we are happy with the result. Yes, we're going to put more in. Uh, we created numerous chances. We just couldn't finish. You know, they couldn't keep their composure in the box, the focus, and um, they just – but we still take the win. How many times have you seen a high line like that in the back? I mean, at the first four minutes, I think you're offside five times, so it was a definitely a job oh, period. We weren't ready for that. Um, the way we practiced was to try to, you know, play those quick, play the balls between the lines, and that's what we were trying to do. But they were stepping up too high. We weren't ready for that, and the guys got caught. So I have to suck kids out to just show them what they were doing, and we were able to adjust. Yeah, and I think going direct, you want a little bit more direct right, there, right, later, and right, then you created right. all those chances. Right. I wanted to, I wanted to be direct. Um, I mean, the tendency is to go side to side, yeah. and we were, I was trying to be direct today because I wanted to send a message, you know, to let them know that they couldn't play with us, but they caught us you know, with the offside trap. <laughs> they caught us in the offside trap. The, the thing that's interesting about that is, you know, he's pointing out things that are wrong with Fort Lee, that, that they didn't do maybe as well as they could have in that game. But I think that shows the growth of the Fort Lee program, that they just got a win in the Bergen County Tournament. They hadn't been in it in four years, and they get a win in the opening round. And he says, you know, we could have played better. You know, Demba, uh, in, in, in speaking to Coach quite a bit, um, his purpose in that program is to get Fort Lee to play outside their league. They, they yep. feel confident playing in our league, whether it was a 10-team league, whether it was a 5-team league. When he was a player, it was a 10-team league. Now he's been head coach for four years. Uh, Fort Lee's MO is that they do well in our league. They've won a bunch of league titles in our league. But when they step outside our league in, in a county title, in a county tournament or a state tournament, 
They never put their best game together. And uh, to win a playing game, a 2-1 game on his home field and moving forward against Aramapo um, is, is a step in the right direction for him and his philosophy. Again, another guy who it's all about the big picture. I want to teach accountability. I want to teach these kids that life ain't easy. And if I can do that through soccer, well, then you know what? We're going to, we're going to kill two birds with one stone. And I tell you what, this matchup against Ramapo, I've seen Ramapo play. I saw the Ramapo St. Joe's game. I've seen Fort Lee in, in a, in a pregame, uh, preseason match. You're absolutely right. Their pace on the ball is very good, and they're strong right down the middle. And as long as you have a goalkeeper like Fort Lee has, as long as you've got two defenders that are physical and skillful in the back, you've got two midfielders that can knock it around a little bit with their quick short passes, their transition is decent, and they've got a kid, Paul Lee, up top that, you know what? He's got great, great body control. He's always finding himself in a very positive situation to move forward. And more importantly than that, he can play with the, the net to his back. Um, yeah, anytime you take those intangibles in the game with confidence, I mean, I, I think they're sitting 7-2-2 two and two or 7-1-2. and two. Yep. Listen, they don't have any pressure. And, uh, you know, and, and it goes to show what Denver's doing over there. He's doing a great job because it's not just about high school soccer. It's about how can you make yourself better to promote yourself as a player and, a, and as a person. And yes. that goes a long way in high school sports. I agree. It's attitude. And Paul Leal, who you mentioned, the uh, striker, he's got 11 goals in 10 games. And he did well. And you also mentioned their defense and how they're experienced in the back. And this is a, a, another good aspect of high school sports. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher his name, but Rio Sugawara, who is a four year defender. Four-year starter, right? Four-year starter. Four-year starter, yeah. exactly. Uh, plays, plays, I think he was playing right uh, on the outside defense against Dwight Angwood. And this kid, you said Dem has been there four years. This kid's been in the program four years. He had a lot of perspective. Mm-hmm. I caught up with him after the game. I talked about trying to hold the lead. But also, he was on the field the last time they played in the Bergen County mm-hmm. tournament. He was a freshman in a 3 nothing loss against uh, Old Japan in 2011, so I got a quick quote from him. Here it is. So you were here the last time you were in the county tournament. You mm-hmm. played in that game? Yeah. So uh, this has to feel a little bit better than that. Um, yeah, because um, last time was kind of like a miracle that we made it, and that we really didn't have any expectations. But this time we're 11th seed. You know, we're not really – we are underdogs, but, you know, we're up there. So we've got to prove some people wrong, tell them that we're up there. What's been the biggest thing where you guys are kind of back now? You know what I mean? Beating Cliffside Park, getting a win in the Bur- – and whatever happens from here, you won a game in the Burton County Tournament. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we take each game one game at a time. So every game we just get better, score more goals, score, you know, concede less, and just keep playing. Good stuff, man. Congratulations. Good game. Yeah, so, you know, uh, they handled their business, and they're, and they're moving on. Let's just mention the rest of the first-round winners. Fairlawn beat Emerson. Pascack Valley beat Beckton. I mentioned Bergen Catholic's win over Woodridge. Mm-hmm. Waldwick beat Hasbro Heights. Fort Lee beat Dwight Anglewood. And Westwood beat New Milford. Mm-hmm. That sets up a very interesting round of 16, which, uh, you know, we're taping this on Saturday. By the time people listen to this, those games might already be over, whatever the case there. But we will uh, have our interview with Anthony Vassallo coming up quickly. Then we will go on and review, uh, preview the rest of the round of 16. All right, Jimmy. Well, this is the moment that you and I have been waiting for, you know, since we had the brainstorm of getting together and doing a show. As we welcome in a man who has, you know, takes his time away from his medical career. I mean, this guy is a trained and practicing physician. He's also very near and dear to our hearts. Let's welcome in Dr. Anthony Vassallo and also the assistant coach of Leonia Boys Soccer Program. What's up, Doc? Nothing much, boys. How are you guys doing? <laughs> well, we're just here kicking around some soccer thoughts and Leonia in a very interesting situation. You know, Jim Fusey has been your biggest cheerleader this year on this show where he said, was saying all along, you know, so let's go take a look at Leonia. They're a good team. No play in game. Get them in the main draw. You guys got that? You have a round of 16 matchup against Garfield on Sunday. Uh, you know, how do you guys feel about that? And do you think, you know, give us the overview of Leon Saka right now. Well, um, you know, we're we're certainly happy about not getting the play in. Um, or first round, I should say the first round game. Right, that's um, politically correct. <laughs> um, you know, it's um, it, we've had that game a bunch, and it's nice. But, you know, you want to look the ladder a little bit, and, and I'm glad that the committee felt like we were deserving of a of a seed um, that avoided that. Um, we've done it once before, I, I believe. I think we were we were seeded into the tournament a number of years ago against Ramapo. Um, I don't remember. Thank you for that, committee. 
Would you like yeah. to thank the committee for that? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, I think they went to the finals that year, even though they were seeded like six or seven. But it, it, was, it was a good team. It was a good team. Um, so uh, it's you know, anytime you get to play on on Sunday in, in this tournament, it's, it's always a nice, nice thing. I think Jimmy alluded to that in the last the last segment last week. You know, it's just it's really a great tournament. The kids love it. Um, it has that you know that Indiana high school basketball feel to it with. Uh, you know, all the schools of all different sizes, and it's just a, it's just a, it's a well-run tournament. Jimmy, did you hear that? We have a listener. We do. We do. <laughs> we have one <laughs> listener, and that's why no we ticket. like the guy. He listens just because he's our friend. That's, you know, I listen. <laughs> we make him laugh a little bit, I think. Yeah, go ahead, Jimmy. Listen, you got, Ed, you got the six fifteen game. Cliff oh, Clyde. that's when, when the one I, that NorthJerseySports.com never covers. Never covers. I'll be there, though. Um I'm a part of NorthJersey.com yeah. now, aren't I? I feel like you guys used yeah. to always get that at Cliffside. We I always had ever, the late game. Always I've had never had a night game. It's good to have the late game, though. It really is because, you know, you, you get you get a good feel. You, it builds up throughout the day. But not only that, though, um, what's the biggest difference? I mean, your team was successful last year. I mean, let, let's face it, a sectional finals, um, competitive, you know, you you got unlucky a little bit in the first round of the counties, but your team had a real successful year. You return a lot of guys. What what what's the difference? What's your head what's the difference between last year's team and this year's team? What what is it? Well, it's a good question. I think last year's team took a while to gel. I mean we did have a successful end of the season, but you know at a certain point, you know, I think after after we lost to Garfield in the in the first round game in the county tournament we were I think we were sitting at six and three or six and four. I don't remember at that point. It's six and three, and um, you know, like I said, we we had a bunch of seniors last year who actually were not experienced. They didn't really play as juniors a lot of them. So it took you know those eight or nine games, as well as a bunch of sophomores. So we had um, you know nine, ten games to get under our belt before they kind of figured things out. Um, and we made a couple, uh, you know, internal switches, one in the back and one in the midfield, and it, it, we just ran with it. You know, sometimes it's just the kids getting hot. Uh, the confidence is a really, really good part of this game, and when they get rolling, you know, it, despite my best efforts as a coach, um, or, you know, or me changing things up, they just keep rolling. Um, so I think we, we caught some fire last year, and and. Um, I think it, it rolled over this year. We had a good preseason training. Um, <clears throat> we had a number of kids back who have uh, league, all league and, and all county experience from last year. So, uh, you know, there's not much inexperience on the squad. Jimmy, you asked the guy a question. He's going to give you a well thought out. He, I think I think it, Dr. Anthony Vassal is too smart for the show. What do you think, Jimmy? I, I, I'm threatening. He, he might take my spot next year. I don't know. The way you go through, the way you go through co-hosts, man, I might be on hot buddy. <laughs> we do have a very high churn rate here on so North Jersey Sports. Yeah, this, uh, might be, this might be like the head coach of the Raiders. This <laughs> yeah. opens up every year. That's right. Yep. Just if you if you don't like the weather, just wait a couple of minutes. It'll change around here. Doc, but Ed, you, Doc, you, go ahead. Go ahead, Jimmy. Doc, go ahead. You talk about experience. I mean, you got the kid Zagarias up top, right? Um, yeah. Coming back from last year, leading goal scorer. You got the kid D'Angelo in the middle, or mm-hmm. or he was a uh, he, he was a defender for you. So I mean, those are two kids right there that uh, D'Angelo has been a three year starter for you, I believe, and and the kid Zagarias. Four year starter. Four year yeah, starter. Four year starter. Yeah. Zagarias is now a junior. Is that right? He's a junior, yeah. He's um, he's uh, actually hasn't been scoring as much this year for us as he has uh, in the past two years. But he's been um, he's been providing uh, you know good service and has been our leading assist guy. Um, he's got great great vision on the field. Um, he's 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 a different kind of player. You know, he's put on a number a, a lot of muscle. He's kind of changed his body. He's a better defender. He tracks better. Uh, he, so he's kind of expanded his game a little bit, and we're happy with where he is right now. Um, Christian is is a, a very versatile player. Yeah, he's a, he's, our, he's a four year star. He's one of our two captains, along with Chris Lombardo, and um, he gives us time. You know, at right back, he gives us time in the middle, does whatever we ask him to, and um, does a lot of things good. He's, he's as to a, as good of a box to box kind of kid that we've had here. 
um, in, in as long as I can remember. Who was that? Were you talking about Lombardo there, or? Uh, uh, I was talking about D'Angelo. Oh, D'Angelo. But, um, I, I, yeah, I, w- but, I wanted to mention Lombardo because after I covered your game early this season against New Milford, you told me an interesting story about Lombardo, and I think that kind of embodies what this team is, if you want to share that one. Yeah, Chris is uh, Chris is just the kind of kid that um, I'm, I'm sure he's wanted to, to step up into into the midfield at times, and we, we allow him to, but he really – since his freshman year, has been um, one of our key defenders. Uh, he's active. He's he's dedicated, and, and he's our other co-captain. And um, you know, we had we had a little bump in preseason, and um, you know, I felt like the kids were kind of slacking off for about a week's period, and I thought we didn't get enough done. I took them out to the track to run a, a timed two mile, which which is part of our preseason program. We, we asked them to be under twelve thirty. 12 minutes and 30 seconds, and most of them had made it the week before. Uh, now, it was a hot day uh, in August, and I brought them back out to the track, and everybody basically, uh, except for Chris, did not make their mark. Everybody finished, you know, 13 minutes or, or higher. Chris, however, who's um, just a workaholic on the field, finished 15 seconds faster than his previous time on a day that was just I mean, it was, it was, must have been 100 on the humidity index. Right. And he's just, that's just the kind of kid he is. You know, you bring him out there to prove a point and he's going to prove a point to the rest of the team. And I think that, that actually got us back on the track, um, and, and refocused for the, for the rest of the preseason. Jimmy, that's what you call leadership. That's, uh, that's why he's a captain. Absolutely. That's what you look for. You know, you look at, we, we talked about it with the coach at Fort Lee Dumba. You know, it, it's not, it's not about, it's about high school sports because we coach it, but any time you can, you know, you see a kid do that, you know, you got to get inside a kid's ear and say, listen, man, that's why you're going to be CEO of company someday. That's why you're going to be successful in life and a good husband and a good father because you persevere. You know, it's 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 a lot more than just high school sports, and it shows that that kid's got that extra motor and his character. Character is the root of success. Clearly he has it. And let me ask you this. Uh, Garfield coming up. You know they're good. We had Mark Pico on the show uh, two weeks ago or last week, whatever it was. Uh, he, he thinks he has a good squad. He's correct in saying that. I mean, what do you got to do to be successful against a Garfield team that really knocks the ball around uh, pretty well? Yeah, they. Um, I think they're in a similar boat to us. I think that they they really um, they needed a little bit of time last year to get to get going and I think they're they're sort of carrying all that momentum into into this season. I think they got a very similar squad. I'm not sure that they graduated many pieces. Um and they're they're big players. Um you know, kid in the middle of the park um is, is a good player. Um I forget, I'm forgetting his name. Well you could pronounce it anyway. I too mean, much too much day quill. There's a <laughs> There's a lot of vowels and consonants. Yes, all again, he's a doctor. Yeah. He might be able to pronounce it. Yeah, well, doctors yeah. have the worst handwriting, so he probably <laughs> wrote it down and can't. Um, but um, I, 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 I feel like last year um, playing them was was a good experience. I think I think it'll provide both teams with some knowledge, and I think the game will be well played and competitive. Um, you know, they like to hold on to the ball and, and knock it around. Um, we like to hold on to the ball and knock it around. We both have some pieces that can do some individual damage, and there's going to be a number of golden moments in that game. It's going to be a matter of who, who capitalizes on them. I think it will be an exciting game. I think it will be one that people should watch, though I understand at 6-15. Um, there might not be many people left, but um, I, I think it will be a good match. Doc, real quick, what's the one thing Leone's got to do to put themselves in the situation to be successful? Tomorrow. The one thing tomorrow, spe- tomorrow specifically, uh, I, I believe um, it might be it might come down to set piece execution for, okay. for either one of us. Defensively um, or offensively? Uh, well, both. I mean, last okay. year I believe it was a three-two match. We we scored on a set piece. They scored on two set pieces, and they were, um, I thought, in, in all cases, well defended. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a matter of three kids making three big shots. Um, and, you know, I, I think that um, that could be the case this year, too, because, like I said, there's, there's um, you know, five, six, seven kids on the field 
um, combined that can be difference makers. So um, I'm excited. The kids are excited. I'm sure Garfield excited. I'm sure. I'm sure the town of Garfield is excited. Uh, Poland just beat Germany for the first time ever. I'm watching right. the European qualifier. So, uh, you know, little shout out. <laughs> but um, yeah, I um, I think set pieces are probably the one big thing. I think if you look back on um, you know after the game, one of one of the two, one of the sides will end up um, on top probably with, with a set piece. And last thing from me is that it's really I, I'm uh, asking you more for a comment than an answer to a question. The Creskill Superintendent of Schools, would you like to comment on his technological skills uh, before we let you off the line here? Oh, that be Mr. Michael Burke at Creskill yes. High School? Yes. Uh, oh, sorry, not Creskill High School. It's Creskill School District. Yes, the entire town. Yes. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm sure he got hired for other reasons than his technological know-how, considering his uh, – a very basic knowledge of the uh, smartphone usage. Jimmy, I saw Mike Burke, uh, who you know I went to high school with, yeah. and I saw him at a Cresco game a couple weeks ago, and he says, ah, he showed me his new smartphone. He goes, do you know you can plug this right into your car and you can listen to the podcast? <laughs> oh my, uh, as a matter of fact, yes, I did know that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Ant, great stuff. Yep. It's been a great year for Leonia so far. I mean, I, I think to – it, listen, if you can go out there and get a win against Garfield, and we know that's no easy proposition, I don't think it would be an upset either way, no matter which team wins. I mean, but it could really stamp Leonia. Uh, it could stamp the whole season for you. Listen, the, the big boys are playing for the title. Not that you, your kids, not that you should tell your kids they can't win, or uh, not even that your kids shouldn't believe that they can win. But to get there, to get to that round of final eight, I mean, I think that would be something very special for a group one slash two programs such as yourselves. I mean, I still call you as group one. You're a small school. Uh, I don't care what the NJSIA says. So, you know, it it, it, it really is uh, interesting and uh, an interesting part of high school soccer around here when you throw in everybody and, and see what the results. So uh, it's going to be fun. Jimmy will be there to see it. I will long be home by that point working on my stories from the earlier games. But, you know, pal, we appreciate you coming here on Hitting the Post, and we wish you nothing but success. But I add the caveat that we said the same thing to Mark Piccolo mm-hmm. last week. Clearly. You guys are fence sitters. I know how it works. All right, Thanks Ant. for having me. It was, you it, got it, 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 it was always good talking with you guys. Uh, interesting stuff there with Dr. Anthony Vassallo, Jimmy. And, uh, you know, other than the fact that he has an extreme case of Ebola, I thought he was great. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's uh, clearly smarter than both of us put together, buddy. Yes, uh, but it's good. It's nice to have to be humbled every now and again. Yeah. You know, we get involved talking, and we think we're so stinking smart. Guess what, boys? You're not. No, I'm not smart. I was a special ed kid in high school, buddy, and I went to yeah. side, so couldn't be that smart. <laughs> right, special. <laughs> I'll leave that one alone. All right. Thank you, David. Let's, let's, let's go through uh, quickly. We'll yeah. go through a little bit more of the yeah. round of 16 here, and this is going to play out on Sunday afternoon. Your old squad, Cliffside Park, in an interesting matchup, the defending champs playing Pascag Valley, Pascag Valley on its own home field. Yeah, you know what? I I think any time you go up against the uh, Nigran squad, um, <laughs> they will seems, be prepared. It seems like they got 18 kids on the field, and they have like eight runs coming at you at one time. I think it's a difficult challenge. But on the flip side of it, uh, Cliffside uh, had, a, had a tough game on Monday against uh, Ramsey and it's a one one nothing loss. I, I think Coach Oz and their team found a lot out about themselves um, in a good way. Um, I think they played in the physical match. Uh, I think it was a hostile environment and uh, you know, I, I think they 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 figured it out a little bit after that. Well you know you can lose you, you can lose and still, you know, learn a lot. And I and I think that's the situation Cliff sides in. That's gonna be an interesting game. The two games that really popped to me um, that Bergen Ramsey game, um, I wish yes. I could get there for that. Uh, it, it, you're talking about two teams um, that are traditionally are very physical. Uh, there's a difference between, you know, when you use the word physical in soccer, people are like, oh, he's saying we're dirty. No. No, there's a difference between being physical, there's a difference between being dirty, there's a difference of being disgusting, and you should probably be thrown in jail. <laughs> These two teams play within the rules, and they're very, very physical teams. They're both very quick. They're both very tactical. They can be both very skillful at times, depending on where the ball is on that pitch. It's going to be a very interesting game. You know, yeah. uh, you know, Ramsey's coming in and undefeated. Bergen's coming in battle tested. You know, week in, week out, week out. I think it's a very interesting game. I think that's a pick 'em. Uh, the other game, 
is that St. Joe's Wallington game. Yes. You know, I, I, I saw St. Joe's against Ramapo, and, and I said it on a previous show that Ramapo's pace on a ball is phenomenal. Their decision making it's a typical Ramapo team. Okay. I think Ramapo won that game. I believe it was a 2 1 game. St. Joe's on the defensive end of the ball. Defensive side of the ball didn't give any space to Ramapo. It was very, very, very difficult for Ramapo to be creative, to find positive space going towards the goal. Uh, and on the flip side of it, if you look at Wallington, hey, listen, man, they're 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 goal scoring juggernaut machine. So yep. it, it would be interesting to get to that game too. If I can if I can cut myself in four different ways and put myself in four different places at one time, those two games I would definitely go. And watch because um, now, now you know how I've felt for the past 15 years yeah. as the editorial director of NorthJerseySports.com. Yeah. Well, you want to do everything. You got but. you got my my little guy's got a game tomorrow, and then I'm going to um, going to Mr. Casamento's uh, memorial service at Cliffside. We should Middle mention School. that I, I I tweeted that uh, yeah. earlier uh, this week uh, the loss of Don Casamento, yeah. a a guy who taught in your school forever, but also uh, on my end, lived in my town in Northvale. Long-time Cliffside Park educator, long-time volleyball and softball uh, official, and forever a great guy. Uh, Don Casamento will be missed. You, you know what? Not to get away from soccer or anything, yep. but uh, Mr. Kaz was my uh, history teacher my sophomore in high school. Um, when my wife and I started teaching at Cliffside, there wasn't a day that went by that I didn't peek his head in the gym or my wife's classroom to ask us if everything was okay. Not a day went by. I got to know him as a professional. I got to know him as a friend. I got to know him as a parent. Um, I've seen him as a coach. I've seen him as an official. Uh, th- there's a lot of people in this world um, that make this world go round. There's a lot of people in this world that when they're gone, we lose a lot. Yep. In terms of the society, not many people that I've come across are all like Donald Casamento, and it's, it's a shame that you'll say things about people like that when they pass. Right. Um, but I think Donald was such an awesome guy, Mr. Cas was such an awesome, awesome guy that um, I'm pretty sure he heard that when he was alive. Um, you know. In and all you have to do, you want to judge somebody, talk to their children. You know, Stephen and Kristen, I mean, two of the nicest now adults. I met them as, you know, high school students. And just, uh, you know, that, that says a lot about the parent. And Don it was it was a good dude. And, it, it, like I said earlier, definitely going to be missed. Yeah. So, you know, that being said, though, yeah. as, uh, you know, we, we got to – the games go on. Yeah. And uh, the other ones that we didn't talk about, interesting. Uh, we'll, we'll just touch on them briefly. We don't have to go too deeply until yeah. we can catch up on all this stuff on next week's show. Don Bosco prep against Wolvik. I saw Bosco earlier this week, a one nothing win over Old Japan. They knocked the ball around very well. The ball does not fly around in the air at all. They're looking for feet all the time. They play physical. Waldwick always has to answer that question. Are they good because they're a small school playing in that league, or are they good, good? They're going to get a chance to answer that question. Uh, you know, a, a perennial state sectional championship type caliber team. And, uh, you know, they've had some success in the Bergen County Tournament. That that game could be more interesting than the seed might suggest. Tenafly against Westwood. Westwood, you got to give them kudos for getting into the tournament, kudos for beating the Milford in the opening round. Going to be tough against Tenafly, who's playing as well as anybody in Bergen County right now. And then Ramapo-Fort Lee, which we talked about earlier. Uh, Ramapo, you sung their praises deservedly. I sung Fort Lee's praises because I saw them against Dwight Englewood. Uh, Ramapo, the obvious favorite, but Fort Lee – no doubt a live underdog with their speed and their organization. I think they're doing a great job. And the other one, Northern Highlands, I guess they would have to be the favorite. If they're the number one seed, they're the team that people are looking at to win this thing. Uh, and they have a match against Fairlawn, which also did a good job by winning its first-round match and will have a chance to really test themselves against the Highlanders. Did I, am I leaving anything out or missing anything you want to mention? Nope. I think everything was well said. Well, that's always the case here on Hitting the Post on NorthJerseySports.com. Season 2, Episode 4. We will back be back next week. Now, listen, we understand that we have been very Bergen County boys soccer heavy here on this show so far. Listen, Jimmy's a new co-host. That's what we, the two of us, know best. But we should also mention that uh, next weekend the Passaic County girls and boys semifinals will be played. We're going to get to some of that on NorthJerseySports.com. I'll poke around, see if we can grab some guests and we have to talk about Bergen County girls soccer as well. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that last night, which was Friday night, Ramapo head coach Paul Henehan won his 700th career game. I mean, 
Jimmy, 700, bro. I think you can take three leagues in Bergen County and add up all their coaches' wins, and they still don't equate to 700. That's just that's crazy. You look yeah. at 700 wins, and then you look at the guy at Pasco Valley, Jasper, with 900-plus wins. Right, but they play more games in basketball to win they 700 yes, in right. soccer. You're right. That's a lot, dude. <laughs> yes. I don't think that's somebody's goal coming into it. You know what? When I retire, I, my first day of soccer practice, you set goals for yourself as a first-time head coach. I don't yep. think 700 wins is one of those goals you set for yourself. <laughs> yeah. I will say this. Uh, you know, he, he, in the hand, he looks exactly the same as when I first met him when I first got on the Ramapo uh, beat back in 1999. And he is retired as a teacher now. He's devoting, you know, he's getting to devote all his time to soccer. Not that he didn't anyway. But, uh, he, you know, he's devoting his time to soccer. And he's still, he's got a smile. Yeah. Uh, he's still into it. So I don't see him going anywhere anytime soon. And I will effort to get him on the show. You know, it's funny, Jimmy, because I know Paul. I, I consider him a friend. I've had long conversations with him. I shoot a soccer camp every summer except this year because of, uh, you know, travel plans and everything else. I didn't get to do it. But I've had long conversations with him, and I consider him a friend. I'm always just hesitant to say, hey, come on the show. But uh, something like this where, uh, you know, history, again, he's made history again. I will try to get him on the show. And even if we do it, as a sidebar, maybe just a little one-on-one -on -one interview with Paul Heenan outside the uh, confines of the show. We can do that as well. Awesome. All right. So it, that's buddy. it. That's it. That uh, wraps up this week, sets up next week, and we will talk to you next time. Peace out, Follow the leader.